Hey, welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you joining us today. We have a great message uh, from what Jesus is teaching in Matthew 18, the 99 plus one. But first, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you want to learn more about what Jesus taught, what he said here on earth, and how he meant for us to apply what he, his teachings were all about, and plus how do they intermix with the Old Testament, then you're in the right place. Please subscribe. And thank you to all my other subscribers. I really appreciate your support here. This is uh, going to be a great little reading here uh, from Matthew 18. So I just want to go over real quick the, these graphics. Uh, this channel is based on uh, these really uh, four foundation verses. Uh, we believe Christ's teachings are forever. We believe in his assignment that he has given us in the Great Commission. Then we believe also in the works of Christ that he tells us, you must hold to my teachings in order to be a disciple of mine. So we believe that we must continue his works. And then we also believe that Christ is our sole teacher and we must obey him. We, if we love him, we obey him. So those are our foundations here at this channel and i appreciate you guys if you look at those and really read them and and, and tell me what you think you know so also we're going to look at matthew 18 through 12 through 14 here this is really great i'm going to give you i'm going to read it and then i'm going to give you a kind of like a overview so what do you think if any man has let me go back. This is what Jesus is saying. This is what he's saying right now. So these are his words. You can say the red letters of what Christ is saying. What do you think if any man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go search for that one stray? If he turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over more than, than the 99 which have not gone astray. So it is not the will of the Father who's in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Wow, great news. If you're, if you're like me, I've gone astray so many times. No matter how many steps you step back from the Lord, it only takes one step forward to getting back in alignment with the Lord with repentance, turning away from um, all that idolatry or whatever you're doing, and get back with the Lord and repent and stay in repentance as well. And this is such good news because the last verse I love about how God does not, it's not his will for us to perish. Hell was not made for humans. It wasn't made for it was made for Satan and, and, and his angels. So he does not wish for us to be condemned. We condemn ourselves by being disobedient, by being shutting him down, by not obeying him. If we, I mean, think about that. Disobedience is a huge part of, of Yeshua's gospel. Yeshua, the Hamashiach, which is Jesus Christ, his gospel of repentance, love, and um, love shown through obedience. So obedience is a huge part of it. I mean, if you look at it, Satan, when he was in heaven, he knew God. He was he dwelt amongst God. He, he was a heavenly creature that knew God. He believed him 100% because he saw him. He knew, but what did he not do? He did not obey God. He was so prideful, his obedience wasn't there. Kind of like us. It takes more than just a belief. Now, some would say your belief will affect your behavior. I totally believe that you'll be obedient. So if you love him, you'll be obedient to him. And what I like about this verse, these verses here is that we may stray off sometimes, but the Lord's going to come, the good Lord, the shepherd's going to bring us back. He's going to want to bring us back. But verse 13 shows us there's free will there. It, turn, it, it says, if it turns out that he finds it, if, there's a chance he may not find it, which that means rejection of the Lord, what he did, and not being disobedient and being disobedient to him, knowingly being disobedient to him. So there is some free will here. So this is, I also love to remind I, I, what I really like about this it reminds me of the prodigal son. In this scripture, Jesus tells the parable about the good shepherd, which is God, who leaves behind the ninety-nine sheep to search for the for the one that went astray. He emphasizes the joy of the lost sheep. Um, it's greater joy than the ninety-nine that have not gone astray. 
as followers of Christ, we are called to demonstrate this love and grace in our interactions with others. It is our responsibility to reach out to those who may be lost, hurting, or feeling disconnected. We should be willing to leave our comfort zone, extend a helping hand, and provide a safe space for individuals to find healing and forgiveness and restoration. We may not judge and condemn, but instead of offer understanding and support and encouragement through a genuine care acts of kindness, and then we can help guide them back into a loving embracing of God's family. And what I mean by that is we need to really look at our own lives too and, and get in line with the Lord, but not be judging everyone all the time. And Jesus says not to judge. That's how we have discernment. Discernment's all about judgment, but righteously how to judge. If I have the same sin as so-and-so and I'm judging him, now I have the log in my own eye. I must get right with God. And before I can talk with the individuals, but we must have patience as well. Patience with other people. If they can also see the love and demonstration that we have for them. So every day is a great day to call to the Lord and ask today, Lord, how can I demonstrate your love to the lost sheep out there? We see that in John. The lo- I like to call this the love uh, scriptures. When Jesus asked Peter, will you feed my sheep, tend my sheep, you know, take care of my sheep? So oh, there's three things that the Lord asked all about taking care of his sheep. What will we do? And that's, a, that's, a, that's like a, another way of a great commission and what we're called to do. And we do this by not condemning people, calling people heretical hypocrites or anything like that. We do things in love, and we have good dialogue, and we love each other. And we are all trying to do one thing, trying to get right with God. Hope this message served you well. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Do you know the power of Jesus' words? Well, first, subscribe now if you want to learn more about Jesus. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. There are many times about the power of his words. One example can be found in Matthew 24, 35, where Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This verse speaks to the eternal nature of Jesus' words and their lasting impact on the world. In John 6, 63, it says, The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. Overall, Jesus teaches about power of his words, emphasizes the eternal, transformative, life-giving nature of his message by believing in his words and allowing them to take root in our hearts. After all, his commands stands. Looking at Isaiah 40, 10 through 11, I believe this is the true armor of God. He is our good shepherd. Behold, the Lord God will come with all his mind, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock in his arm. He will gather his lamb, carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing. This is a great reminder of God's protection and expression of his love for us and demonstrating that he is cares for us and will shield us from harm. We also know that experience God's protection and love. We are called to extend that same love and care to towards others and become an instrument of God's grace and murder those around us. This verse reminds us that God is our protector and provides who cares for us like a shepherd does his sheep. This brings us comfort and hope even through times that and calls us to trust and follow God while experience his love to others. By doing so, we can experience God's abundant life and share his grace and mercy with the world. Remember, if you're that close to the Lord, nothing will harm you. The devil cannot penetrate those arms.